These are, these are students who participated in a music technology class at the Pingree School, which is an independent high school in South Hamilton, Massachusetts on the North Shore. We piloted the use of iPads in this technology class to look at um, what the creative possibilities were of using iPads for music making um, and to offer an opportunity for students to uh, engage in making music sort of at whatever entry point and experience level they have with music. We sort of parlayed that into other software that's uh, a little bit more complicated to use, but I think also pr potentially more powerful on desktop computers, and maybe they can talk a little bit about what they've discovered in music technology. Some of the things we've worked with, um, Ableton has been sort of our, our main computer software, um, which allows us to work with sound synthesis and record loops, um, but uh, everything we've got here is wired into the Jam Hub. So um, this is Ryan's iPad, this is my iPad, this is Dan's iPad, and this is Mr. Hallmeyer's iPad. And everything goes into there and comes out in one stereo channel, which we're running the speakers, which really helps sort of coordinate everything. But it also allows us, we can all plug headphones in here, and we can do, um, we can run practices where essentially no sound is being played out. We're all in headphones, um, and we can change using these knobs. Each one of these corresponds to the different channels. So we can hear a certain level of his sound or a certain level of his sound depending on what we want to hear. Um, so that's one of the bigger things we've been working with. Um, we, we have this app called Sonic Logic as well. You want to open Sonic Logic? Um, this allows us to connect wirelessly to Ableton Live. Are you connected right now, Dan? Uh, I think it... No. no? Let's see if we can get you connected. We're going to wirelessly connect Dan's iPad to this laptop. Using Bluetooth or the, the Wi-Fi in the room? Using, um, using Wi-Fi. Wi yeah. Using Wi-Fi. Wi yeah, but it <laughs> in this place. Not, yeah, 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 no, it actually, we use it the actually uh, was computer was smart. Let's see. How about oh, now? Yeah, yeah NetHawk network. Yeah. Well, um, right. A computer okay. can create a network. Yeah. Oh, right. Can cool. Yeah. Yeah. We usually create an ad hoc network off of our Wi-Fi, but. Yeah, all right, well, this is what, so you want to talk about how it works, though? Yeah, um, go ahead. So essentially what it allows you to do is a blank slate where you can draw anything, buttons to trigger sounds, um, sliders and knobs to, to um, use filters and stuff like that. Um, but what that essentially allows us to do is perform with no wires whatsoever. We can have the computer and this whole mess of wires off stage and perform live just having the iPad with us. And it's a huge capability. Um, we have some other controllers over here. Um, the launch pad and the LPD-8, which offer the same capabilities. The only problem is that this is all you have. It's in that that solid format. Whereas Sonic Logic allows you to sort of design the uh, design the surface that you're going to be using. So we've used uh, the GarageBand app. It was one of the first apps that we uh, used as a class to create a little iPad ensemble performance of "Let It Be" by the Beatles. <laughs> Let's see how that works out. Go ahead, fellas, let's kick it off with you two. Two, three, and four.
all three of us. All three of us are juniors. Uh, we took this uh, class in this last year, and Dan and I right now are doing independent studies. And uh, we also use the uh, work workbench app, which um, which we um, you can uh, record sounds to um, put it in each. Uh, it's a 16-step sequencer, so each um, button corresponds to a sound. You can record sounds and put each sound in the um, each step. You can uh, play through the um, you can play through the um, the sequencer in order and switch through the um, switch through the sounds you make. You can also manipulate each sound that you um, that you created, like. Um, Not a good one to choose. <laughs> you can manipulate each sound by, like, you can manipulate the uh, pitch of it, the envelope, which is kind of how the sound is um, made, the sustain and the delay on which it comes out. And you can, um, the uh, pitch, like which side it comes out, the uh, speaker, left or right speaker, um, pan, my bad. So this is a, uh, a guitar I built. Um, the guitar neck was courtesy of uh, Pingree School. Um, and uh, essentially, uh, I had a microcork synthesizer. I disassembled it, painted, spray painted the keys cobalt blue. Um, and then I, I kind of retrofitted a frame on there to support the guitar neck. So now um, the neck doesn't have a function currently, but I'm hoping to install kind of a whammy um, pitch bend potentiometer on there. And uh, it's a playable synth, uh, so. Let's fire that up. Yeah, you guys play out at like school dances and stuff. <laughs> yeah, sure. And it makes it more more portable. And as a as a pianist, I kind of get to move around and perform more. Yeah, yeah. So. Definitely put you in this oh, yeah. Stage. And yeah. It, 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 if I do say so myself, it looks pretty cool. So. Yeah, I, I think that's remarkable. And there's uh, there's uh, two full sides of sound bake on each preset, so there's 120 sounds in there. So you got uh started looking at synthesizers and how synthesizers work on a computer first, you know, right. and then going back and... Yeah, so you can see, um, I kind of, um, I, what I've been trying to do is combine the work in, um, that we've been doing on the computers with my um, work on this synthesizer so I can kind of use it as a live performance aspect where I'm accompanied by maybe loops I trigger, so it's kind of an ongoing project I have.